are going to show you various types of medieval armor and weapons and what effects they might have had on a human body. We'll show you over there. You can see the head with the, the red hat on it and the mannequin over there. That's uh, Rupert. And we will show you the effects of medieval weapons on those two figurines as well as with the help of our knights and men at armor that are just arriving to the scene. You can see various types of armor from Yay. the ages. It's authentic armor. Nothing is plastic, everything is like real, solid metal. It weights a lot. And you can see that there are very different kinds of armor. On the left, we have just a common soldier with nothing but a padded shirt, basically, and a kettle hat uh, covering his head. And on the far right over there, we've got knight in shining armor, the top-notch gear of the beginning of the 15th century. And Sir Petr, I will say a few words as well. So, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. And now let's take a look at the first type of armor, which is worn by a light infantryman over here. As you can see, he is wearing a red headset, which is basically a piece of garment, which is made of multiple layers of heavily quilted and stitched together fabrics, and it really creates that high density mesh of fabrics overlaid, and it has a very similar effect to the cavalry armor from the modern times. Of course, the effect uh, effectiveness is not so high, but still, it kind of, uh, it kind of is able to withstand some deflected swings with sword and thrust as well. So, guys, if you can show us something. Oh, that guy sucks. <laughs> yeah, we are actually using the blunt sword. There's a uh, simple reason behind it. We need to also wake up tomorrow and go to work, so we don't really want to kill each other. <laughs> but we will show you with a sharp sword, actually, another knight in shiny armor. He has a sharp sword, and he will show you what he can do against the gambeson or the mannequin over there. Since sword is basically a cutting weapon, it can go through, but the cut is not so deep, so there is less bleeding and the risk of infection is also smaller. Oh. Well, that's really It's got true uh, damage to bone. Well, <laughs> see for yourself. not too good for him. <laughs> and now we will also show you what you can no. do if you have no armor at all, which is basically a very bad idea to have in a medical period in a battle. But we have here our hat and a sharp sword. So what do you think it can do? Try on me. It's fine. <laughs> Flesh wounds. Whoa. Oh, whoa. whoa! One more, please. <laughs> Show off. <laughs> so I don't want to beat that guy. Okay. All right. So that was the quilted armor and sharp swords. Now let's see another type of armor, quite ancient, in fact, as old as uh, the Roman Republic, and that is chainmail armor. It's covered by uh, this cloth, we call it buff and rock. But underneath, there is a chainmail shirt. It's made of small... Oh. Whoa! Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's made of small <laughs> wire circles that are nailed together. Did you guess how many of those are there? Six. Oh, um, no, sorry, six pack. Sorry. Six, six pack, yeah. <laughs> six pack is there, definitely. Do you know how many rings? Can you guess? A thousand. A thousand. It's more than a thousand. Two thousand. Sorry? I'd have guessed about ten thousand. Ten thousand. That's actually quite close. It's about twelve to fourteen thousand. So it's very expensive. It takes a lot of time to put it together. The advantage of it is that it's quite flexible. You can move around with your arm, everything. It adapts to your body. And it protects you quite well against slashes. It's also good in the zombie holocaust. Oh my god. god. Nothing fell. But he's angry. <laughs> Aim for the head. <laughs> <laughs> alright, alright guys, let's Ooh. get not carried away. Uh, so, as you can see, such men times in, in this armor could last much longer in a fight. Thank you. You can go back again. So that was slashing, right? But we have different kinds of damage. 
that we can do with medieval weapons. For example, stabbing. You can stab with a sword, you can have a spear, like over there, or a halberd in this case, with a really sharp end. Is it sharp? Yeah. <laughs> I think sharp enough. Yeah. So let's see what it does against the wooden barrel. Oh, it's still good. Oh, oh, good visual. Oh, no, all yeah. that juice yes. is going to waste. People are made of water, did you know that? If you them, water leaks out and they die. So, that was an unprotected body, right? But we have the chain of armor here, so let's see what damage can be done by Halberd. Ooh. So, I'm here, yeah, I can see it. And I, I can show you that it went through. There's a pierce hole in it. You can try it for yourself later this evening. Ooh. Ooh. But you can also use this type of um, attack with a sword, right? So we have the sharp sword, Still and we have... Here I will show you what it can do. He's dead! <laughs> He's Leave him alone! <laughs> So there was the men at arms, chainmail armor, and stepping damage. And now? So now let's take a look at the third type of armor. Guys, please step forward. We have seen already the padded gambeson, the chainmail, and now actually the type of armor which combines all three. So we have a gambeson underneath everything, which is thinner now, and it's also used to kind of lace all the elements of the plate armor to its good wearer. Then we have more coverage of the plate elements for limbs and also better helmets. And also, very solid protection for the chest in the form of single-piece breastplate with a skirt, and also a coat of plates, which is basically a set of plates riveted to the solid fabric, which can hold all the thing together and create that kind of shell-like protection for its wearer. The main important thing to understand is that you can't really cut through the plates. So guys, if you can show something. Ooh. Swords are basically just bouncing away, you know, damage is done, the very could probably heal something, but you can carry on with fighting. I hope it's not personal. <laughs> no doubt, good friends, actually. So now with a full force swing against the mannequin, because they were kind of trying to not hurt each other. Give it to Rupert. Yeah, actually. <laughs> you would definitely feel a little sting, but you could still carry on with fighting. Without your breath. <laughs> so now, is there any special kind of scenario where you could actually pierce a plate, uh, plate armor? If you have, for example, a rider on horseback who has a lance or spear, and he uses all the force of the horse and then himself, and he kind of gathers it to the one point, he can actually overcome the plate protection in the form of coat of plates, and he can pierce between overlapping plates, basically overcoming it and killing the target inside. So what do you actually need to pierce, the, or not really pierce, the, but overcome the armor? You need to change your weaponry for something heavier. So we have maces, halberds, and later you will even see the poleaxes. Oh my god, I missed this that. Actually cause some concussion do it again! Can <laughs> uh, is, he, is he okay? He's okay! He's okay. okay. <laughs> is he alive? Just a little concussion. <laughs> okay, this one has a pre tomorrow. <laughs> Sorry? Are you sure the light is no, Not anymore, actually. <laughs> it's alright. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you, Valerie. You may actually stay here. And now we're getting to the most advanced armor of the beginning of the 15th century. The times when Kingdom Come Deliverance is taking place. Bohemia and top notch armor of the era. We have two knights in full plate armor, as you can see here. It's underneath the cloth again. That's because of the sun uh, that um, can make it really hot. But you must believe me that there's a plate underneath, and there's this little lever that switches him off like this. <laughs> <laughs> now, actually, it's a rest for the lance. As you've seen with a, with a shield, we can show you how it works with a lance on a horseback. Like this. <laughs> it's a common misconception that such an armor, which is heavy, I think it's like 30, 35 kilograms, right? It's really heavy, uh, but 
it does not mean that you are immobile in it. You can actually move around, it hits tailor made, you can raise your legs, you can even jump. Jump? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, we have records of knights being able to scale ladder. Uh, in such armor, we have um, records of knights being able to jump in a horseback in full plate armor. So, nothing like a big crane putting them in the saddle. No. Things like that wouldn't work in a medieval battle. They were able to get back to the saddle. Even if they were struck down by a fierce enemy and laid on the ground, they can oh, get goes. back on their feet in an agile manner and continue fighting. The plate armor, our, this combination was protecting the body of the knight quite well. The swords, if I was to quote Gandalf, the swords were of no use here. So you needed something more powerful. Witchcraft, yeah, yeah there's one option, <laughs> certainly, but there's even better thing, four arms. A spas 12. Axes, <laughs> like this, combined with a hammer, or in this case, with a nasty claw on the other side, and a short and sharp tip and on the top of it. This was one of the most powerful weapons, it's slow, but if you make it, and if you get into position of an attack, the damage is terrible. So let's see what it does against the plate armor and somebody's had it. Yeah, you better step back because this is going to get nasty. Oh! Oh my god, wow. And quite dead. What damage did it do to the helmet? We'll be fine in morning. No. Is it through? Yep. Oh, oh, yeah. wow. oh wow! I think there's a hole. Yeah, let me take a hole. So the hammer has pierced the helmet, and even if it didn't, I think that the damage to the head would be, as you can see, fatal. I don't think you would be. Oh, look, look, yeah. All right. Thank you, Peter, for this demonstration. CSI 1403. What to do with such a well-trained, well-equipped? and a well-armed medieval knight. The only thing that remains is bigger numbers. Oh, oh my. No. Oh. Yes, it's unfair. Welcome to the Middle Ages. I'll join Get him. him. I'll join him. <laughs> Do him in. Well, normally, <laughs> at this point, the knight would ask for ransom. But since half of his face is missing, he wouldn't return him like that to his father. So, Misericordia or the dagger, the ending dagger as his life. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you, knights and men of the Long time ago, in the 15th century Bohemia, two knights stood against each other. Great harm was done, and the only thing that could redeem it is a duel. In front of God. They pray and gear up with the hope that the God will be on their side tonight. Choosing weapons. Spears or long swords. Or both in this case. An unusual combination.
Oh, he's all right. But what if you were just wandering <laughs> through you know? the forest and somebody ambushed you? Oh, this <laughs> oh, there's three this Three time. Four <laughs>